Hey everyone, my name is Jason. I'm a community manager at Coffee Stain Studios. Last week, we actually released a teaser trailer for some cool new features coming to update eight. Two new features, the priority power switch and the power towers. And if you didn't see the teaser trailer, it'll be up here in the cards if you want to check it out. And yeah, and today we're just basically going to be talking about what those things are and how they work. Now, a fun little fact is actually both of these features were kind of, we started making these way back in update four, actually. I think the power tower model has been done since back then. Um, and the priority power switch we've leaked more times than a broken faucet, to be honest. Uh, I remember uh, there was one video where we were talking about new UI coming with resource wells and things like that. And uh, there was like, there was a, two frames. I think it was two frames of the uh, priority power switch in the build menu and you guys caught it. So we'll equip the uh, pressurizer. We'll plop that on there. Plop that on there. It's nice for them to be finally finished off and they're coming out with update eight. So that's exciting. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the power tower. Uh, this big bad boy is going to be unlocked in tier four in a new milestone called expanded power infrastructure, which is actually the name of a milestone in tier six. That milestone is now going to be renamed into logistics mark four. And then this new milestone added to tier four with the power tower and power storage will be moved into it. And that would be called expanded power infrastructure <laughs> and power towers have two attachment points. They have a top and a bottom. There's a power top, and there's a power bottom. <laughs> oh, I'm just sitting there going, don't make the don't make the joke, Jace. Don't make the joke. Don't say it. Don't say it. Power top and power bottom. Okay. And the different attachment points actually have, uh, I think the top one has three attachments to it, and the bottom one has four, so the power tower can connect up to seven uh, connections at a time. Um, the top and the bottom attachment points have different properties. For example, if you uh, click a power line on the top, uh, attachment points and you drag out, you'll drag out a power tower automatically in the same way that power poles usually work when you drag a line out of out of power poles. And if you um, attach it to the bottom attachment point, that automatically pulls out a uh, power pole, which is generally speaking what you want to do when you're um, working with the power towers. You know, use the top attachment points for, to cover a lot of distance and then the bottom ones to pull out power poles to nearby factories. Another property of the power towers is that the top attachment point when building out of that, uh, you can actually build cables about about three times as long as you can normally with power poles. So one of the main things about this power tower is the ability to uh, quickly and easily run long power lines uh, a really long distance, right? Like great distances. Um, also, it looks really cool. You know, can you imagine these, these power towers just disappearing over the horizon across the desert? I think it looks super sick. And this also means that the build gun when dealing with power towers actually has a longer build distance as well so that you can still build power towers really, really far away. It makes a lot of sense for the feature. So now there are actually two types of power towers. And if you use the uh, quick switch radial menu, you'll see them both there as well. So you can, you know, use quick switch for that. Um, and the two types are one with a platform and one without a platform. And the entire purpose of having the platform one is there's a ladder on it, you can climb up to the top, and then of course you can zip line across the uh, you know really, really long distances. And this synergizes super, super well with the zip line sprint mode that we added back in update seven. We had this feature in mind when we added that feature, and now it makes way more sense if you have the zip line with you because because you can be standing on a power tower with a with a platform and then pull out another power tower with a platform build it a long distance, zip line, zip line spr sprint mode to get to the other power tower, land on it, and then rinse and repeat. And you can, you can just keep doing that. And you can actually run power lines quite far, quite quickly. And so that's how the power tower works. Next up is going to be the priority power switch. Yeah, we got the power top, the power bottom, and now we got the power switch. Very good. Okay. <laughs> The priority power switch is an advanced version of the power switch, and it is unlocked in the Mam Katerian research. Uh, and this thing is uh, actually super powerful. Um, it is the power switch they told you not to worry about, but uh, I'd be sweating. I'd be sweating. This thing's crazy good. Let's get into it. So typically in Satisfactory, if your power consumption exceeds your power production and you have no power backed up in storage, your entire power network would just shut off, right? We've heard, all heard that sound. We all know and love it. What the power priority switch allows you to do is gate off different sections of your factory into different like power grids, sort of. Uh, as defined by the priority power switch. And then it will allow you to assign each of those gated off segments a priority so that if the power were to fail, it will start switching off the segments with the least priority in your factory so as to stabilize what your power production can actually maintain. Long story short, it makes it so your factory doesn't shut down entirely. So the way that this works is if you go up to the priority power switch, you open up its menu, there'll be a fuse sequence tab and in it, on the right hand side, there will be like all of your priority power switches that you've built uh, and a bunch of fuse groups, right? And then you can just simply drag and drop 
your priority power switches into whatever group you want them to be in. And so when there isn't enough power in your factory, your fuse groups will start turning off uh, from lowest priority to highest priority, lowest priority being fuse group eight, highest priority being fuse group one, and it will turn off everything within those groups one by one until your factory stabilizes. And an easy way to remember these fuse groups is that fuse group one is for your number one priority buildings, so you want them to stay on as long as possible, okay? So uh, a good use case for these, for example, is you might want to keep power production buildings in fuse group one. That way, they are the last buildings to shut down because if you lose power to your power production buildings, it can be a real pain generating power to get your power production back up and running again. Another cool feature with these bad boys is that you can actually modify the priority setup of any priority power switch from any switch, regardless of whether they are on a network or not a network at all. So you can just pop a priority power switch down in front of you and manage all of your priority power switches from anywhere if you want. Not only that, but the priority power switches in the fuse menu have little like toggles on them, right? You guys see the little slider there? And that is to turn on or off remotely any priority power switch from anywhere across the map. And I think this is a secret little gem of a feature. So this means that like, even if you're not relying on the whole like automatic trip feature to, to save your factory from shutting down, it's such a great way to turn on and off distant uh, factories that you don't want to, to take up power anymore if you don't want them to. You can just do it from anywhere. I think this is a really, really, really powerful um, extra feature, little bonus feature to get here with the uh, priority power switch. Now, depending on how you've built your power grid in your factory right now and how neat and tidy things might be, uh, in order to utilize the priority power switch, you may need to rework some stuff if you want if you want these benefits. Ideally, you want to isolate your different factories with as few in and out points as possible, preferably only one in and out point. So you can just put one switch down there and turning that on and off will turn that whole segment on and off. So anything that's super in interconnected is, is going to struggle because it's going to be hard to organize all those power switches. Uh, priority power switch does not mean you'll never lose power to all of your buildings if for some reason, uh, first of all, not everything has to be in a fuse group. You might leave some stuff off to the side and therefore it won't automatically trip. Um, the other thing is if for any reason, whatever fuse group you have your power in, power production in for some reason somehow doesn't get the power it needs, then it will still shut down too. So it's still entirely possible to shut down your entire uh, power network. But overall, the priority power switch is a super, super handy little tool, which will drastically reduce the amount of total factory wide blackouts um, that you'll be experiencing if you take advantage of it. And I highly recommend you give it a go in update eight. It's definitely, definitely worth it, I think. And it's really not that hard to set up. Like you might just need to rework some power cables, but it's like, it's super worth it. Such a great little feature. It's like you got the big power tower, it's like the dad, and then you got power, priority power switch. Good little boy, you know, little, little pet on the head. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. I'm too tired. And yeah, so that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about today. So if you like those two features, leave a like and a comment down below. Thanks, Coffee Saint Studios, for designing amazing features. Helps a lot. You can do that. Let them know that you appreciate their work. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys next time. Have a lovely weekend. Take care. Bye.